Technology and Livelihood Education. Agriculture and Fishery Arts for Grade 7. Our topic is Crop Care and Maintenance, Harvesting and Post-Harvesting Practices. Crop Care and Maintenance, Harvesting and Post-Harvesting Practices Let's check what you already know about the various practices and crop maintenance. Can you share some insights on the following videos and pictures? Crops. Crops are plants or plant produce that can be raised, cultivated, and harvested for subsistence or profit. They may be classified as food crops, cash crops, forage crops, oil crops, industrial crops, fiber crops, and ornamental crops. Pesticides. These may be natural, organic, or commercial products that control the widespread of pests and diseases in the agricultural field. While the herbicides may be natural, organic, or commercial products that control the widespread of weeds in the field. Cultivation. This is the process of loosening the hardened soil through plowing or harrowing. It is believed to control weeds and pests in the farm. Irrigation. It is the process of maintaining the moisture and water content of soil needed for the plant growth. Trellis. These may be made from wood or metal that serves as support for climbing and crawling crops. Fertilizer. These may be natural, organic, or commercial products applied to increase the nutrients into the soil. Watch the video on proper care and maintenance of farm. You can also watch different videos in YouTube on the proper care and maintenance of the farm. Check the link below. After watching the video on proper care and maintenance of farm, answer the questions below. First, what various practices for crop care and maintenance are presented in the video? Please list them from pre-production to harvesting, if needed. And, why is it important for farmers to understand the proper care and maintenance of crops? The following are the types of crops. First is the food crops. This is primarily raised, cultured, and harvested for human consumption. It may be classified as field crops or root crops. The field crops are grown on a large scale for commercial purposes. This includes fruits and vegetables, wheat, rice, corn, sugarcane. The root crops are underground plant parts for human consumption. Like carrot, sugar beet, turnip, potato, peanut, radish, etc. Here are some examples of food crops. The 
The cash crops. This type of crops is sold for profit. It can be exported to other countries as well. Like coffee, cocoa, sugarcane, and other exportable crops. Feed or forage crops. This type of plant is usually raised, cultured, and harvested for livestock consumption. Like corn, pasture grasses. The fiber crops. This type of plant is usually raised, cultured, and harvested for its fibers to be used as a raw material. Like cotton, abaca, banana and pineapple fiber. The oil crops. This type of plant is usually raised, cultured, and harvested for production of oil. Like sugarcane, palm tree, coconut, etc. The ornamental crops. This type of plant is usually raised, cultured, and harvested for decorations in the garden and landscape projects. Example, orchids, rubber tree, bougainvillea, rose. The industrial crops. This type of plant is usually raised, cultured, harvested, and processed by industries for the production of non-edible materials. Example, tobacco. The classification of crops according to growth habits. First is the herb. A non-woody plants that typically die back at the end of the growing season. Next is the vine. These are plants that climb or sprawl, often relying on other structures for support. Next is the liana. It is a type of woody vine that typically grows in tropical rainforests. The shrub are woody plants that are smaller than trees, usually with multiple stems. The tree are tall, woody plants with a single main stem, trunk. Next is the evergreen. These are trees or shrubs that retain their leaves throughout the year. And finally, the deciduous. These trees or shrubs that lose their leaves seasonally. The classification of plants based on their life cycle. Annual crops. These plants complete their life cycle in one growing season. They germinate, grow, flower, and produce seeds all within a year. Examples include corn, wheat, and beans. Next is the biennial crops. These crops require two years to complete their life cycle. In the first year, they grow leaves and roots, while in the second year, they flower and produce seeds. Examples include carrots and onions. And lastly, perennial crops. These plants live for multiple years, regrowing each season from the same root system. They can produce flowers and seeds every year once established. Examples include asparagus and fruit trees like apple or cherry. The following are the factors that influence the crop production. The water, soil, wind, temperature, sunlight, seed selection, knowledge, crop care and maintenance. It is deemed important to consider these factors as they affect the growth of the plant and as well as the produce or harvest. The crop production is the process which involves several steps, wherein farmers should take precautionary measures at each step. The farmers should also consider the external conditions and factors to achieve bountiful harvest. Thus, farmers should have sufficient knowledge in crop care and maintenance. The first crop care and maintenance process is the cultivation. This is the first stage of crop production. Cultivation refers to the stirring of the soil through plowing or harrowing. Cultivating the soil is one of the most effective ways to control weeds and pests. Cultivating the soil loosens the soil around the plant which provides air for the root of the plants. This technique is called conventional tillage. Reduced or no tillage can lead to accumulation of soil carbon, consequently benefiting soil health and improving crop yields. Next is the seed sowing and plant seedling. Good quality and healthy seeds and seedlings should be considered prior to sowing and planting, respectively. In seed sowing, the correct depth of soil of 1.5 to 2 inches deep is important for sowing seeds to ensure proper moisture. In sowing the seeds or planting the seedlings, farmers should consider the proper spacing to allow plants on its optimal growth. Next is the irrigation. 
Crops require water because water prevents crops from drying out especially during drought. However, the amount of water differs from each variety of crops. There are various ways in which farmers irrigate the crops, manual, drip, and sprinkler irrigation. The following are the types of irrigation. First is the manual irrigation. It is a labor-intensive and time-consuming method which uses laborers to irrigate water using water cans. Next is the drip irrigation. This is the most effective way to supply water and nutrients to crops. It provides water and nutrients directly to the zone of plants in the proper amount and proper time. The sprinkler irrigation uses pipes and spray to irrigate the whole field. Pipelines may be used when water is scarce to eliminate water losses. Finally, soil and plant factors determine the irrigation requirements of the crops. Next is the fertilizer application. If the soil is deprived of nutrients, it requires management of nutrients such as application of fertilizers, manures, and compost to enrich the soil content. There are methods of fertilizer application. This can be scattering and mixing with the soil before planting. The weed control. Weeds lead to the reduction of crop yield, increased production costs, and increased incidence of pests and diseases. Weeding control method. Manual weeding or hand weeding is a time-consuming and labor-intensive method. Laborers use their hands and or sickle or scythe to remove weeds crops and the weeds. Thus, skill is needed to apply this kind of herbicide. The mechanical weeding. This uses machinery to remove weeds such as Kona weeder, power tiller, basket hoe, while the chemical weeding uses herbicides to remove seeds. They may be considered selective or non-selective herbicides. Selective herbicides aim the weeds only with effect on the crops, while non-selective herbicides harm both main crops and the weeds. Thus, skill is needed to apply this kind of herbicide. The Pests and Diseases Control To drive away pests, farmers apply pesticides. There are different varieties of pesticides and each of them has a particular function. This includes herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, molluscicides, and rodenticides. However, farmers are encouraged to employ eco-safe and eco-friendly ways to control pests and diseases. This may include production of organic pesticides and encouragement on the presence of organisms that kills pests. The support for climbing plants. Or trellis, there is a need to provide support for climbing and crawling plants such as bitter gourd, squash, string beans. Trellis may be made of wood or metal. Harvesting and Preservation Farmers harvest when crops reach maturity. Farmers have various ways to gather and harvest crops such as traditional techniques and modern ways. This stage of the development of vegetables when harvested influences the quality of produce. There are factors that determine the harvest date of the crops such as genetic composition of the vegetable variety, planting date, and environmental conditions. The manual harvesting is employed through the use of mechanical tools such as sickle or scythe for broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower. Some vegetables are mechanically harvested. The changes in the post-harvest are influenced by various factors such as kind of crop, temperature, oxygen and carbon dioxide content, relative humidity, and disease incitant organisms. Storing the produce contributes to price stabilization. It also contributes to the preservation of the produce. The vegetable storage should consider the following parameters. It should be free from mechanical, insect, and disease injury, and matured crops. There are changes that occur on the produce such as water loss, conversion of starch and sugar, flavor changes, color changes, toughening or softening, vitamin gain or loss, sprouting, rooting, and decay. This deteriorates the quality of produce. So, proper storage is needed. The methods of storing vegetable are the common or unrefrigerated storage and the cold or the refrigerated storage. There is a lack of precise control of temperature and humidity in common storage. 
This uses insulated storage houses, outdoor cellars, or mounds. The cold storage allows precise regulation of temperature and humidity and maintenance of constant conditions with the use of refrigeration. Pre-marketing operations and selling. This stage involves washing, trimming, waxing, pre-cooling, grading, pre-packaging, and packaging. The pre-cooling involves rapid removal of heat from freshly harvested vegetables, slows natural deterioration of the produce, slows the growth of decay, and retards water loss. This includes hydrocooling, contact icing, vacuum cooling, cooling, and air cooling. Hydrocooling is done by cooling the produce by direct contact with cold water flowing through the packed containers. Contact icing uses crushed ice placed in the package or spread over a stack of packages to pre-cool the contents. Vacuum cooling produces rapid evaporation of a small quantity of water that lowers the temperature of the crops. Air cooling is done through exposure of vegetables to cold air. The grading. This process ensures that the crops are classified according to their size, shape, color, and ripeness. This establishes a good trade. The packaging. The products are placed in bags, trays, cartons, crates, and hampers of various kinds and sizes depending on the types of crops. This furnishes a convenient means for transport, loading, and stacking with security and economy space. The selling process. In selling, the farmers sell their produce through retail or wholesale. Retail sales are done when consumers buy produce, often the roadside stands. Wholesale marketing is made when produce is sold to retailers, commercial, institutional, or other large-scale owners. There are many other additional practices to increase crop productivity and farm profitability include increase crop diversity, enhance beneficial pollinators' population, employ more eco-friendly weed control measures, improve soil quality, manage labor and input costs, keep track of all the records including expenses and profit, involve in creative marketing. A time to remember. This is Teacher Mylene. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.